In this video, I'm going to be showing you my uh, Crossman MTR77NP. The MP stands for Nitro Piston, and it's a brake barrel air rifle, um, but it's a replica air gun. So it's actually a replica of a real firearm, an M16A2, um, but it's actually a brake barrel air rifle. It looks very realistic. Um, I've changed mine just a little bit, um, just to add to the realism, because I'm a big kid, and I love replica air guns. Um, you either love them or hate them. They are a bit Marmite. Some purists uh, in the air gun world um, think there shouldn't be any replica uh, air guns, but... Um, I like them, why not? Um, I grew up in the 80s and uh, <laughs> the M16 was in pretty much all of the action movies um, out there. Um, Oi, out of the picture here. So yeah, uh, what have I done, what have I done? Out of the box, um, it looks very sort of brand new and black and shiny. And obviously a real M16 uh, that's seen active service uh, will be battle scarred and, and worn and the metal work would have patina um, and, and stuff like that um, so I masked off the foregrip barrel shroud and the uh, butt stock I don't want to get any paint on that and the uh, pistol grip um, but all this is plastic but just using a little bit of silver paint and a bit of trial and error um, I've tried to give it a bit of a metallic battle age look um, the secret is less is more you can always add a bit more paint you can't take it off and i used a sponge not a paintbrush and just very lightly got all the paint off that i could um before i uh sort of dabbed little areas and what you got to try and think is um, where would um it wear on a on a you know a metal uh, receiver firearm so things like the forward assist um and where the magazine uh you know gets knocked about here and that sort of thing around the trigger um, so I've tried like I say to um, give it that battle age look um, I did a little bit of the same on the front so on the muzzle brake and the um, open sight the iron sight the front it's plastic but I've tried to make it look a little bit sort of you know metallic looking um, so if you squint your eyes at a distance I think I've achieved that also I've put a um, rifle sling on it genuine uh, m16 rifle sling uh just give a bit of a uh, authenticism and a bit of realism and plus you've probably noticed if you know these uh crossman rifles that's a 30 round magazine um doesn't come with a 30 round magazine it comes with a uh comes with a 20 round that's the crossman one uh, it's also plastic but same again i've battle aged it just a give it a bit of realism so when shooting uh, I use the 20 round because uh, the main reason it won't cock with 30 round so that's why Crosman obviously opted for for the 20 round surely but the for realism I quite like the 30 round and also this is uh, metal so whilst the 20 round from Crosman is plastic um, I've actually got a, an airsoft metal 30 round and with a little bit of uh, modification with the Dremel um, it's just got quite a big sort of cavity in there um, you could put I don't know, your lunch in there or I wouldn't put pellets in there or rattle around make a right old racket but you could put a cleaning kit in there I suppose um, but yeah I quite like that 30 rounder now shooting wise um, is a rifle steel barrel um, it's a very good uh, power source, so the um, the piston, instead of a spring, it's actually got a compressed gas piston uh, of nitrogen, and Cosmo call it their nitro power, so NP. And um, for the UK and some parts of the world, Canada and stuff, the power has to be restricted. Uh, in the States, um, where this is made, it's uh, 1,200 feet per second. So 177 pellet, 1,200 feet per second, depending on what grain, you're looking about 15 to 16 foot pounds uh, muzzle velocity so for the uh, for the UK ours is 12 foot pounds maximum can't exceed it otherwise it becomes a, f a firearm air rifles um, so it's 800 feet per second I've tested it's just under that 
uh, with the pellets I was using. So yeah, 800 feet per second. It was about 11.2 foot pounds. Um, so I'm more than happy with that. Um, it's, it's a great power source inside. I say it may be a plastic replica air, air gun um, of a firearm, but um, the actual power plant inside is a quality piece of kit and it's robust. It stood the test of time and uh, you know, it's, it's a great power plant in there. Um, underneath the um, carry handle, it's removable. You just undo these screws and you can put a scope on there. Um, same for the front sight. You can just uh, undo that, take that off, and then that's out of the way. If you want to put on a, a red dot or a, uh, a torch on there, you could do and tactically up a little bit. Um, it's not an M4, like I say, it is a, an M16 copy an A2. Um, I do, I think I prefer the A1, just because the uh, amount of Vietnam War moves I've seen. But um, this, uh, everything apart from pretty much this and things like the um, the eject assist that flicks the uh, spent casings out um, is, 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 is very much similar to the, the A1 but this is an A2 variant um, like I said it's a metal weaver rail underneath there and that's part of the power plant and the rest of it is just plastic it just coats it all um, I was going to say something else I've got now so it's under power and everything like that uh, battle worn yeah discussed that how I did it um, oh yeah I've got a a rubber uh, butt plate on there. It's actually got quite a, a good kick to it for an air rifle. You've got to get, you've got a bit of recoil. Um, I quite like that in a, um, a replica sort of air gun. It's like I like the blowback pistols. So it's got a little bit of a kick. I will put that on there to make it a bit more comfortable. And also, because no adjustable stock, I prefer longer reach. Um, just because of uh, my eyesight more than anything. I prefer when I'm looking through the open sights. I'm a bit further away from it. Um, so that's that. Um, yeah, uh, shooting wise, the trigger. That's what I was going to say. I'll show you the video in a minute. Uh, Crossman triggers. Um, they are predictably long. Sometimes they're a little bit scratchy. Um, and uh, hard to pull. Now, the trigger on this one is adjustable. I'll show you an image in a minute. You can put a screwdriver in there. And by screwing in, uh, that should um, reduce the pull length. Okay, um, I don't think it made a great deal of difference. Uh, I've screwed it all the way in. Um, it's still a very long pull. Uh, it pretty much goes all the way back and then lets off about there. So that's quite a long pull. But in its defense, I think it's about two and a half pounds um, per pull on, on the trigger. That's not bad, actually. Um, I don't mind it. Um, there's no two stage, it's just a one stage. Um, you get you get used to where it's going to let off. So when the shear uh, disengages and um, it fires, you get used to it. Uh, so I, I'm not going to muck about with it. I know you can modify um, the, these triggers, as you can with uh, all the Crosman ones. But um, I quite like it like that. I think Crosman do it deliberately as a safety thing. So rather than have like a, a short like a hair trigger, um, let's air on the side of safety, have a longer pull, and then we've, we've got less chance of uh, getting sued, <laughs> stuff like that. So I think that's why it hasn't got like a, a match grade um, light trigger. But I don't mind. The other thing I think uh, is another consideration, if it's cold and you're wearing gloves, because obviously with a nitro piston, like a Springer, um, weather is don't, doesn't matter. Um, you can shoot this uh, all year round. Today's a bit cold, sun's out, but it's a bit cold. But um, it's performing well, and I know if it's CO2, I wouldn't even bother because um, CO2 is drastically affected um, by weather and temperature. Um, so yeah, back to sort of uh, if it's cold and you want to wear gloves, um, having that sort of a uh, longer um, pull on there means that you get your finger in there you, and you haven't got to worry about setting it off accidentally by having uh, a, a light trigger. So. Yeah, I'm happy. I can live with it. Um, loads of uh, purists out there will just slate this as just being not a proper um, sort of trigger or whatever. Um, it is uh, plas plastic. Um, the safety um, has complied with various laws now. It has to have a safety. Um, it's just a flick forward um, type safety. Um, I tend to not to use it really, but I'll, I'll do a little video. You can see how you can just flick it forward with your finger. Um, no 
big deal there. Um, it groups well, open sights, they are iron sights, they're combat sights, they're supposed to just point at a body mass and, and shoot, um, so it's not a precision um, competition uh, sight. Um, I'm going to keep it, I like it, I want this look, I don't want to put a scope on it. Um, like I said, it's not a competition um, rifle, air rifle, it is a, uh, a bit of fun. It's for shooting tin cans, um, reactive spinning targets, that sort of thing, and uh, just uh, enjoying it, you know. Um, so I won't put a scope on it, I'm not worried about that side of things. But you'll see over, what are we, we're 15 yards, so that's about 13 metres, 45 foot. 45 foot, I'll shoot with open sights and you can see what sort of grouping you can achieve with it. Um, you have got a windage and elevation adjustment on the on the uh, carry handle side at the back. Um, there's no adjustment on the front, on the real thing. You can actually uh, adjust the post up and down, but um, it, it's grouping okay. I'm happy with it, um, more than happy with it. And it's got more than enough punch and kick to it to make it a bit of fun. Right, I bored you to death with my talking. So type a bit of action. <laughs> 